for Jungi Marone in our main event. We'll find out next here on Friday Night Fights. Ready to see our main event, where activity is a big note here. Juan Carlos Payano just fought a few weeks ago. Jundi Marone has fought just once nine months ago in the last three years. Both men 28, both men unbeaten and willing to take on the challenge of facing each other here in 10 rounds among these Bantamweights. And there is Jundi Marone, 5'6", came in at 116 and a half. Veteran Southpaw from the Philippines. Told you he has struggled with inactivity. He's only fought once in the U.S. And that's his only fight other than the limited competition he fought in the Philippines. And there is Juan Carlos Payano, who had over 500 amateur bouts. An Olympian in 04 and 08 from the Dominican Republic, a gold medalist in the Pan Am Games. And he checked in at just under 117 pounds, five foot five, fighting out of Miami now. Teddy Atlas brings us the fight plan brought to you by Corona Extra. Thomas Edison helps bring electricity and light. Yeah, it is. It's uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Quite a man. Randy Newman is our referee for Payano and Marone, scheduled for 10. Hey, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules of the state as they've been thoroughly gone over. I want you to remember two things. Of course, I want you to obey my commands. But number one, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the bell. So I'll tell you early on that Marone, yes, indeed, he's been involved in head clashes. He has a technical draw because of a head clash, and he was cut over his right eye in his career. Remember, fought in May 2009, then had a three-round knockout in September of 2012. That's it. Those three rounds between now and going back to 09. See, I'm so glad that you touched on that because that might be the most important part of the fight. Just like we talked in the call feature about Diaz being vulnerable early to Vincente because of his inactivity, same thing here. There's a danger zone early for Marone because of that inactivity. And you touched on it. Plenty of gaps of that inactivity in his career. Like you said, nine months since he was last in the ring. But then, before that fight, he was off three years and four months. Also, he has gaps of two years and one month and one year and four months. So, lots of gaps. Danger zone, maybe early on. And Payano wants to jump on him a little bit but that's really not Payano's way he likes to give a little ground and look to counter for the most part he just did with a left hand talk about amateur experience how about 523 amateur fights for oh. Payano two Olympics represented Dominican Republic in 2004 and 2008 those are the kind of numbers when you start talking 500 plus that we would see with a Cuban amateur or an old era Soviet or Iron Curtain laden amateur. Very good point. Because they didn't have the option of turning pro. No, they didn't. They didn't have professional boxing in those regimes, those countries that a lot of them would. Laszlo Papp. Exactly. 1950s. Dictatorship, communist countries back Tail in those Stevens. days. Yes, exactly. They could not turn pro unless, of course, they escaped, got out of there, came to the United States. Otherwise, they could not turn pro, and you'd see him in two, three Olympics. And you'd accumulate, as you just said, many, many amateur fights. Maybe too many sometimes. Too, sometimes you can get burnt out in the amateurs with that many fights. A lot of miles on the odometer. Peano doing Marone a favor here based on what we were talking about. There's blood coming from the corner of his right eye. Yeah, I think he is because that inactivity of Marone, you know, he's rusty early, maybe a little doubtful early. You get on him, take advantage of it. You can't take advantage of it if you're staying away. And there's a cut in the corner of the right eye of Payano. Payano was cut over his right eye four fights ago, and he's cut there again. 
we'll get confirmation from the commission here ringside as to whether that was confirmed as a clash of heads or caused by a punch. I believe we'll get clarification with the ringside commission, but I think they're probably going to go with that being a clash of heads based on what they saw ringside here. Yeah, why wouldn't you? I mean, you have the technology. You have the benefit of seeing it. And you, you got one of your colleagues sitting right here. Yeah, and she saw it, and you don't have to guess at it. You know, guess it was a punch, guess right, it was a head. Right, no, no, you look punch. at the replay. It's available to you. It's a clash. Get it right. So hopefully they do get it right that it was a clash of heads. We said before the fight started, in the first round that Marone has been involved and you can see why Joey comes in there he leans forward his upper body gets ahead of his lower body that's a no-no that's the wrong way to do it you're supposed to have your legs up there and have your upper body with your legs not ahead of your legs and Marone's been involved in head clashes before and because of that style because of that that flaw in his technique we have Bernardo over, I see him over talking to the commission at ringside, trying to get clarification about headbutt or punch. But right now, Ayano, the busier man, and again, doing it his way. He gives a little to get a little, gives a little ground, gets you to reach in a little bit and does that. Counters you. That man didn't do a great job in the corner there, the right eye of Ayano dripping already. Dr. Richard Hill working that corner. Hey, Mickey punch. Ward is the assistant in that corner, Herman Casado. Well, Mickey was good at creating cuts. I don't it know if sure he's was. that great at closing them, but hopefully the doctor will do a better job. So there's a counter punch. I mean, that is the perfect example of pure counterpunching. Payano waited for the wide punch from Marone, and it was wide from too far away. Payano made him miss, and then made him pay. And that's what Payano's all about. You know, he's got good eyes, he sees it coming, got a good field of vision. Just look at him, he's concentrating really with those peepers, looking for spots. If you wait too long on him, you're a little slow, he'll beat you to the mark, but otherwise, you wait for that. Wait for you to miss, and then he's going to look to come back with something. Reminder, you can head over to our Facebook page and join in the live scoring with Teddy Atlas. One of the adjustments for Malone, Joe, should be go to the body with Ayano. You have a guy using his legs, a guy who's a little bit tricky defensively. Go downstairs. Both southpaws here, as we talked about in the fight plan. So usually a southpaw has an edge going into a fight because the orthodox fighter doesn't usually see southpaws that much. The edge is negated here. Both guys looking into a mirror. Okay, last round you saw Bernardo, the news hound over there with the commission. Let's see what he came up with. Bernardo. Joe, Randy Newman, after the end of round one, told Commissioner Aaron Davis it was a punch that caused the cut. Then, after the advice of the auxiliary referee here, Sparkle Lee, he walked over after the end of the second round and told the commissioner it's now by an accidental headbutt. So that changes the situation immensely. Okay, so it's officially going down, according to the commission, as a clash of heads to cut over the right eye. Listen, here's all I care about. I don't care about get it right. the rules. Just get it right. And they did. And use the information, use the equipment, in this case, the videotape to get it right. Right now, the big advantage, forget about counter punching. The advantage for me in this fight right now is Payano a little quicker, and he's still bleeding in the corner of that right eye, but a little quicker with his feet and with his hands. Marone, a little cement footed, a little on the slow side. Coming to the end of round three, these two unbeaten bantamweights clashing here in West Orange, New Jersey.
was a oh, he's stabbing hurt. left hand and then a sweeping right hand to the body, and he scores the knockdown there in the final seconds of round number three. And guess what? Exactly what we talked about in the fight plan. Piano, Piano slid out a little bit. He likes to slide out, look for that we left uppercut. Up, okay? And he gave a little we space up. with the right hand think? down. And Marone filled that we space up, with the straight left hand. Watch. There, there it is. is. Exactly what we talked about in the fight plan. Morano, right hand down. I should say Piano leans over on that side. Stayed right in the path of it. Exactly. Then. The straight left hand did the job. And there it is. Full extension. Good extension by Marone on his power punch. The left hand. We talked to the fight plan. Both fighters like their left hand. Marone loves it to the head. Well, he's got to be happy right now. So Juan Carlos Payano hurt and goes down in the final seconds there of round three. So now Payano has two things to worry about. Having just been dropped and having a cut that has not been completely handled in the corner by Dr. Richard Hill. Now Jundi Marone. See if he can come out and take advantage here. Oh, there's a sharp left hand by Payano. Well, and Piano, now he's on the attack. Well, Payano's still the quicker guy, feet and hands. So far, just one spot that has damaged him by Marone. But look for that left hand. That's what is the calling card for Marone. That left hand to the head. And look for the opportunity for it. But Piano slips over to his left and gives a little too much space and keeps the right hand low right. by the wayside. Piano opens up the seventh here with a right. left choke. Right. You know, it's funny because Marone's body language, almost it acts as if Piano, you know, threw a feint there. He actually, his body goes back for a moment, just the opposite of what you're looking for him to do. Here's a good offensive attack and a knockdown score by Juan Carlos Piano. Let's go. Good night. Marone, first loss of his career. Peano stays unbeaten. And still down on the canvas is 28-year-old Jundi Marone as they have four ringside positions here, does the New Jersey Commission. So they are well-staffed to handle this situation. And they are tending to him there on the ring apron. See him moving his eyes as they were just talking to Jundi Marone. Yeah, he's conscious, he's alert. Right now, just at home, for the concerned viewers, the medical people are doing their job. They're keeping Marone stable, don't want him to move yet. They're asking him questions, asking him if he feels his extremities, if he's cognizant of what's going on. And then when they feel they've gotten the right answers and they've seen... Yeah, this is when they feel good enough where he can handle then being moved to the stool. They'll get him to the stool, and then EMTs will often enter the ring and take it from there. You know, they did it step by step, followed the procedure, the process, if you will, kept him stable, didn't let him move until they got the answers, until they saw what they needed to see. They saw, they heard, and now they have him up on the stool, and it's a good sight to see. And now we can talk about how Piano put him in that position. He did it with the left hand. We talked in the fight plan. Both these fighters like to use the left hand. Well, the left hand, the Piano, was the one that got it done. Let's show you how he accomplished it. It was impressive. And why does the punch land? Because an opportunity is given. There you saw Marone laying on his left side, just laying there right in the path of the straight left hand from the south floor. Watch again. He shouldn't be laying there. I talked about it earlier, Joe, exactly that. There was space 
He was given space. And it seems like Marone and his team do not want to use the avalanche. Your we'll winner see. by knockout and still undefeated from Santiago, Dominican Republic, Juan Carlos Baby Pacquiao Pagano. Juan Carlos.